This is an extract from an account written uh, recently by Steve Turner, uh, founder, member of the band Dead Man's Radio. Uh, it's titled The Murky Origins. Once upon a time, there were two young punks called Dave and Steve. They were fed up with just going to gigs, getting drunk, being chased by teddy boys and football fans. Then they bumped into a strange man with a ziggy haircut who said his name was Frank and who informed them he could play guitar and was looking for a couple of likely lads. So it goes. Trouble was, no drummer. Anyway, the first songs were tried. The very first was called Regular Superman, penned by Frank. The opening lines were, I'm a regular Superman, I fly out of a baked bean can. This led to the first disagreement in the band. When Steve said, I'm not singing that, Frank said, well, can you do better? And Steve thought he couldn't do any worse and went away to write lyrics. So equipment was acquired. Steve got a cheap guitar, Dave got an amp and Frank got a new haircut and was told to stop wearing flares. Frank showed Dave and Steve the basics and songs were starting to be gathered. Rehearsals were peppered with shouts of, play faster Frank, play faster. First gig with the unproven drip dry and the uncleanables, memories are vague of the night but some people actually got up and danced and there was a jam with another artist as a punky version of Ralph McTell. So back at the room Frank called home, the now nameless and drummerless trio had to consider their next move. Drummers were thought if you had a kit and could walk and chew gum at the same time you could be considered. One of the audition songs was the band's own song, I'm Scared. This seemed to sum up the mood. They all had to pass the Dave Reynolds test. He had recently taken to pouring water and other liquids over Frank's head and it often looked as if he wasn't going to stop there. He would ask obscure and often meaningless questions, scowl at the drummers, try to put them off while they were playing, and was prone to other unexpected and unconventional behaviour. One young lad, only 16, was nearly reduced to tears. Then, in a short space of time, both the drummer and name conundrums were solved. From somewhere a tall hollow cheeked drummer was found whose name was Andy. He looked the part in his Doc Martens and combat pants. He claimed he was of Viking descent. And why not? Frank was definitely Scottish. Dave claimed Romany blood and Steve's family on his mother's side were Irish. It all added to the mix. Crucially, there were three things in his favour besides looking right. He had a kit, he could play, said kit, and he was not phased by Mr Reynolds. Now, they were beginning to look like a band and were even arrested by the police when transporting some amps from Steve's to Frank's. Or was it the other way around? No matter, he was a bit of street cred. Names were suggested and rejected. The Murray Mints. Red Alert, something based on an old Norse letter from Andy. Then one day they were meeting at Frank's and on the table was an old Bakelite radio. The kind with a dial for finding stations like Third Light, Athlone and of course Luxembourg. Steve asked, who's that radio? Frank replied, he just got it from his uncles who had just died. What? came Steve's reply. So it's a dead man's radio? And the four of them looked at each other and dead man's radio was born. This is my memory of events 30 odd years ago. No names have been changed because no one is innocent. There was an intake of alcohol and other substances at the time and the memory can play tricks. But as far as I can tell, the above account is true.